Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today I'm doing a quick video on upgrading a Chevrolet Bolt cabin air filter from a standard air filter to a HEPA air filter. And uh, many reasons why I want to do this. Um, we've had a horrible amount of smoke and forest fires this last summer and um, the particulate matter that's in the air is incredibly unhealthy to breathe and also, um, COVID-19, this, this filter will actually filter that out, so, um, as well as asbestos. So, it's kind of nice, you know, why would you bother to get a regular filter when you can get a HEPA filter? So, anyway, today, today's video, we're going to go ahead and upgrade our filter to a HEPA filter. So, let's go ahead and get started. To get to the air filter, is super easy on this car. All you have to do is open up the glove box, and then using a flathead screwdriver, there's a shock absorber right here. And at the very bot at the very base here, there's a, it's, you can see right there, it's kind of clamped in there. All you have to do is put your screwdriver and wedge it like so. And then with your left hand, which I can't do because I'm holding the camera, you grab and slide off this, uh, this piece right here. So let me do that real quick. So just like so, once that's slid off, you can just move that out of the way. Then all you have to do is put pressure on each side of the, of the glove. Once again, I need three hands, like so. And then voila. And then the next step up right up here is where our filter is located. So all you have to do is press in like this and then this this cap comes right off like so. Very simple easy access and then you pull out the filter right here. Just like so. And that's our filter. So this is straight out of the owner's manual. This shows you the part number. There's two of them. There's a GM part number and an AC Delco part number. And so the filter we just pulled out of the car doesn't match. So this is the actual filter. And it looks like the date code is 160626. So that's a couple months prior to the car being manufactured. So this is most likely the original air filter. Never been replaced. So it's coming up on four years old. Well, actually it is four years old as far as the filter. And you can see it's, it's got a little bit of dust in it. It's not too bad, actually. Considering I think this whole thing was a carbonate. I think I think it comes like with this black or gray kind of uh, I think it has a little bit of carbon filter in it looks like because it has it. It's the same color on this side. So you see it still has that same Stuff so I think that I think this is a carbonized filter. So It's probably not really looking all that bad considering The life that it's had but I don't think that thing's able to, to do what this one is as, as far as particle matter and COVID-19 and asbestos. I mean, this is not going to be able to take out those fine particles. A lot of stuff probably goes right through there. So on my hunt for a HEPA filter, I had to buy a different, slightly different size, as you can tell here. It's just slightly bigger. And um, I hunted and searched, and this, there, was, there just wasn't anything in this size that fit. So what I did is I bought one that was slightly bigger, as you can tell. It's just slightly bigger. And one of the, one of the other advantages to this was the fact is that these filters are generally, they range between $10 and $40. And for some older GM cars that have a very similar filter size, you know, this one to fit this one, it, it's, it was like 40 bucks just to get the filter. And it, it did, and of course it doesn't fit because it's the wrong car. But I was able to find another one that was just slightly bigger. And um, it was only $10, which is actually cheaper than the cheapest filter you could get for this one, you know, in the exact size, even the cheapest, crappiest, you know, no name brand was 10 bucks. So here I got, you know, I got a Bosch HEPA filter. I mean, this is a premium filter for sure. This is going to do a lot more than this thing could ever do. And yet we got it for 10 bucks. So the only downside is it's, it's the wrong size, but we're going to, we're going to modify that real quickly because it's pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe three millimeters, maybe an extra eighth of an inch or so. Um, just to be sure because I know when this filter came out it was loose and we want to make sure that there's there was definitely a little bit of like play in it so I would definitely want to make sure this thing fits tight because the last thing we want to do is have this be short and then have you know all the particle matter get you know go right around the filter we want to make sure that this thing is in there snug and tight and that it's filtering out 100% of the air because otherwise what's the point so I found the easiest method was to do a, a rough cut first and and then just fine tune it afterwards and then expect to, to test fit it, which I did. And then I found out it was binding in certain spots. So what you do is you go back and hit it again. You just kind of take off all those nice, tiny little, tiny little pieces that are sticking out and just kind of just tightly, you know, just gently kind of get it a little bit more fine tuned. And once you get it nice and straight, nice and tight, nice and snug, 
test fit it again and make sure that it goes in without any hesitation and yet you don't want it to be too loose either so you kind of have to kind of play around with it use this side as a guide right here this is rigid these pieces that come with this filter in particular keep it rigid as well so it doesn't really bind up too much um, if you get any kind of resistance you might get something like that in the corner so you want to make sure that you know it doesn't do that but as long as you don't have any uh, any any binding or any resistance and it just goes in nice and gentle then you're basically there. So here it is installed. Um, the filter is, has a little bit shorter depth so you can actually get in there and you can actually see it. I don't know if you can see that but it's in there nice and flat. You can actually see that it's not curled up or anything. And there's the cap back installed. So all you really have to do now is it's much easier to go back together than it is to take it apart. And then the last step of course is to put this uh, shock absorber thing back into place. See if I can do it with one hand here. Basically use your screwdriver to uh, clamp it. Ah, can it go in? Come on, get in. Ah, there we go. Hey, did it with one hand. So there it is, back in place. And now we are done.